So before I start, I would like to apologize for not making and uploading videos for the past days because I was pretty busy and there's been some problems with my ceiling lamp and internet connection but now everything's okay now except for the ceiling lamp uh, well I need to get someone to repair that well let's continue with our let's play good evening everyone and welcome to Javelin Studios I'm Javelin and let's continue with Crystal Light. Okay, in the last we left off, we on our way to Illumia, we took a stop at Raven Pass. Uh, we confronted with the treasurer because for because there's something strange with the tax type at Raven Pass, and we went to investigate. And the treasurer was using a tainted spear, and he's using shadow magic. Uh, then the mayor was grateful and invited us for a night at Raven Pass. And in this episode, we'll continue our journey to Illumia. I'm really awoken by the boisterous yells. As I blink my eyes open, I see the pango planted on Zack's face. What is going on? Zack leaps off the bed, continue his scolding, and the pango scurries under the pillow. I think you've scared him. Get out of there! He snatches the pillow to reveal the pango contentedly blobbing over his discharges. The pango's eyes are slitted shut as he wears a silly grin. Don't even think about it! Zack splits off his discharges and forcefully gives them a shake. The pango's eyes snap open as he wobbles in the air, clinging for their life. Coy! Zack doesn't cease his shaking, and somehow the pango seems to be hanging on. His small, jiggly, his small body jiggles up and down until he finally bounces to the floor. Boy, boy. He glares daggers at Zack, who is too busy inspecting his discharges to notice. There's a sharp knock on the door. Barely comprehending what's going on, I shuffle to the door and open it a crack. I heard yelling. Is everything oh? She cuts off mid-sentence and her eyes grow wide. I look behind me and see Zack dangling his discharges high in the air while the pango leaps up to reach it. These aren't for you to absorb! Boy! Uh... I'll just wait for you guys downstairs. Before I can answer, she, she turns around and walks away. And that is probably for the best. I can't blame her for that. I close the door, sh I close the door and start getting dressed. A long while later, I emerge from the room with the pango sitting on my head. Zack had his, has his discharges back on their holsters and showed us his pack. We head downstairs and meet Liana, who is waiting at one of the tables. Is everyone ready? Yep. Yeah. As long as that thing doesn't come near my dischargers again. Poi poi. The pango sticks up his tongue. Liana speaks before the two of them can start again. All right, then let's hit the road. With one final nod, she leads the way out of the inn and back into town. The rest of the journey towards Illumia is peaceful yet uneventful. The pango snoozes on my head for most of the way there. Liana frequently sneaks a peek at him. Eh. Liana frequently sneaks a peek at him and smiles to herself. Zack keeps to himself and continues to be in the lead for the fewest lines spoken. By midday, I can see the stone buildings of Illumia. We make it through the gate, city gates without incident. Unlike the queen houses of Meadowhill Village, Illumia is built taller and grander. There's more noise as people fill the streets. Zack stares down a side street. This is me. I crane my neck and peer into an alcove. It's a shortcut to the inn. Liana nods. Safe travels. Hopefully our paths will cross again. Good luck at the Mage Academy. He heads on the, into the alley. Do you think we'll see him again? Well, rules of gaming, if someone has an official sprite, of course we will see him. She shrugs. Mercenaries have a way of just popping up. Let's keep moving. The Mage Academy is straight ahead, closer to the center of town. She points to a looming tower with a high steeple. As we get closer, I can see that I see that the tower is attached to a castle. Whoa, you studied here? Yep. It definitely looks prestigious. She notices my wonder. What's your academy like? 
to Grouse College, Pioneer School, Normal University. Lex. I shrug. The usual. Yeah, the usual. There, there are a lot of students all uh, studying different majors, but we all have required courses which we have to complete before branching into our majors. Leanna nods. That sounds similar to the Mage Academy. Everyone here must learn magic and casting. But after that, we are able to choose a discipline. Like becoming a mage knight? Yeah, that's right. We begin making our way down the grand streets of Illumia. Once you re-arrive at the academy, Liana pushes right through the wrought iron gates and leads me across the expansive quad. Students pass by in flocks, chatting animatedly. Each of them wear nearly identical long clothes, differing only in color. Liana glances excitedly at a girl wearing a white cloak. Do you know her? No, but we're in the same house. What does that mean? You can tell by her cloak. White means she's learning wind magic. I pay more attention to the specific colors. There's white, red, blue, and green. And a potential yellow, which they don't have. I bet I can guess which color represents what. Green is white, the yellow knots, red is fire, blue is water, and green is earth. And of course, the hidden yellow one, which is lightning. I'm sure they will add it in. Uh, or maybe ice, but I guess ice is part of water, so I won't press that. And well, maybe light, because since they're shadow magic, I guess they're they must be light. But but well, wind is already have the white color, but so I doubt they'll be adding the light element in there unless. Unless there's an alternative color for light or wind or... Well, I'm okay with that. She grins. You got it. We walk past an enclosed field. A young man sporting a green cloak holds a book in one hand. And with his other hand, aims his manipulator straight ahead of him. His mouth is pressed in concentration and beads of sweat line his forehead. After a few tense minutes, the earth rumbles beneath him and... Dirt spikes shoot off of the ground. That was awesome. Come on! Diana puts poles on my arm, reverting my attention back to the task at hand. We enter the east wing of the castle into and into an open foyer. There are only a scattering of students wandering these halls, and most are accompanied by an adult wearing long black robes. I assume they must be the professors. Or Shadow magic users in disguise, since they were black. Maybe. Diana scans each professor we, we pass, as if looking for someone specific. She leads me up a winding staircase, then grins when she spots an older man with grey hair. His robes are pleated with white stripes and, and he carries a staff in one hand. Professor Orin! He turns at the sound of his name and matches Liana's green. Liana, one of my best and brightest. What a pleasant surprise. She smiles bashfully at the compliment. It's great to see you again. What brings you to the Academy? Actually, I'm here on official business. I'm sure you've heard of the random concentrations of magical energy by now. He nods. Well, I found someone who was directly impacted. She gestures to me. I shift awkwardly as his gaze falls on me. Although he looks intently at me, I can sense his curiosity. What exactly do you mean by impacted? I was investigating a report of unusual magic energy in Meadow Hill, and it turns out the concentrated energy originated from him. Professor Oren raises a skeptical eyebrow. That level of energy would tear a human apart from the inside. Are you sure you weren't mistaken? My manipulator read the energy level. Hmm. Maybe we can use the Academy's equipment to scan him again. Yes, let's do that. He motions for us to follow him, then turns down the hallway. We arrive at a spacious room. There's a large device on one end of the room which is separated by a wall of glass. The device has two panels on the side which stretch up from about 8 feet off the ground. On the other side of the room are a handful of students and professors. They consistently focus their manipulators in 
what I assume to be magical test and every so often jot down notes. A couple of pangos openly roam about the room, mostly ignored by the, by the people. If one wanders a little too close to a crystal, a student chases it away. Otherwise, they just leave each other be. I thought you said pangos weren't really welcome in society. Diana looks fondly around the room, a reminiscent smile on her face. They aren't, but mages tend to like them. Pongos absorb residue energy on the mage from casting, which is surprisingly nice. Kind of feels like a gentle massage. Professor Oren gives her a soft nudge. Go ahead. She nods and turns to me. We're gonna take another scan of you now. You're talking about that huge thing behind the glass, right? Yeah. It looks intimidating, but it functions the same way as my manipulator. Alright. One of the students leads me in to the de uh, to the device and has me stand between the two panels. There's a crystal mounted on top of each panel. As he closes the glass door behind him, the quiet mumbling of voices is muted into silence. A beam of soft light emits from be uh, emits between the crystals and slowly descends towards my head, passing through my torso and disappearing at my feet. Once the light is gone, the same student lets me back into the room. Professor Oren looks grave. Oliana's mouth is pressed into a firm, sh firm frown. This can't be right. Maybe we should scan him again. Liana, the levels that you reported would have killed this young man. Even so, how is it possible that this scan shows he has zero magical energy? She holds out her manipulator, just as when we first met. A pale light glows. Unlike our initial meeting, she, as she holds her manipulator closer to me, the light remains unchanged. Liana's face falls. Professor Oren puts on a comforting hand on her shoulder. Had he just cast it? Perhaps it was magical residue which you had read. As you know, that tends to slowly leave the body after each magic use. She shakes her head. It was too high a reading to just be residue. Well, I actually, we actually witnessed the manipulator well, go crazy during when we first met Liana, so let's defend her. Uh, the last time Liana used her scanner thing on me, that little glowy light was pulsing like crazy. Like, it was almost flatlined, but it was beeping so, so much. Professor Oren seemed intrigued. Then perhaps it was a faulty reading from your manipulator. Perhaps. I can hear the skepticism in her voice. It seemed to be working fine before. Diana shakes her head as if asking me not to continue. I should get back to my students, but I hope I get to see you again. Professor Oren gives Liana's shoulder one last comforting squeeze before he leaves. While discussions had, take, had been taking place, I noticed the pangos would watch me with interest. A green one starts to gravitate towards us. Maybe it's interest in, in Liana's magic? But then why does it look like it's heading towards me? Polly? I look down and see my wobbly blue friend at my feet. Hey, you're back! Polly. He bounces on the ground and fixes me with his white smile. Suddenly, he stops and stares at the green pango who blinks back at him. He hops towards it and grins. Polly! 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 Well, it would be better if they put the green pango text. Well, Green. My pango size widen. Boy, boy, boy. The green pango greens and hops away, and my pango follows it. I have no idea what just happened, but why do I feel all warm and fuzzy inside? As the pangos run off, a professor in a wheelchair rolls towards us. Although he lost all his, his hair, he doesn't seem as old as some of the profess uh some of the others. Layana. She doesn't bother containing her surprise. Professor Xavier! Well nice touch on the reference there. Good job, Pixel Fade. Pleasure to meet you, the D D Professor <laughs> Wait, your name is Professor Xavier? He blinks. Yes. Have we met before? Professor Xavier teaches the effects magic has on the human body, including any genetic mutations from frequent use of magic channeling. 
my eyes grow wide as I gave at him. <laughs> Professor X teaches about mutants. Another reference. There are two of them shared concerned glances. Professor, is there something I can help you with? Leana, how high was your original energy reading? In the thousands. He creases his brow and ponders quietly. Tell me, are you familiar with the theory of temporal rifts? Leanna and I both shake our heads. In the most basic sense, a temporal rift occurs when the fabric of the universe is torn. In the midst of this tear, there is a moment where the parallel worlds overlap. Leanna and I sh glance sharply at each other. Would it be possible to cross between these these worlds? It may be in theory, but it'd be very difficult. After all, that type of travel between worlds would require an immense amount of energy. An amount that no human would be able to manipulate and survive. That's why most elders have dismissed this as nonsense. But listening to all that's been said today, it coincides quite closely with this theory. For the first time since we arrived at this school, I begin to feel a glimmer of hope. What more can you share about this theory? Well, not much, I'm afraid. As I said, most consider it to be either nonsense or too inconsequential to waste their time on. Although, there is one man who spent his life developing and researching this theory. He used to be an instructor of this academy. Is he still in Illumia? Unfortunately, he left many years ago in search of Ember Mist. Leanna purses her lips. The Hidden City. He nods. If it's hidden, I'm guessing it will be hard to find. Before he can respond, a student with two long pigtails strides over. Please allow me to accompany you on your quest. Okay. Professor Xavier replies sternly. Absolutely not. Could you elaborate on your disapproval? This is an excellent opportunity to further my research and education. This is not a Mage Academy sponsored expedition, so there won't be mages around to protect you. It's a dangerous journey, especially given the fact that no one knows the location of Ember Mist. The girl stays silent, and I can practically see the cocks in her head spinning as she contemplates his words. Finally, she nods. Understood. As soon as she finishes speaking, she turns on her heels and walks away. Uh, what just happened? Pay her no mind. That's just how she is. Who is she? That's Amelia Estelle, the university's prodigy. She's only a teenager, but already a mage caster. Which means she can manipulate two different elements at the same time. Really? Just two? Not all of them? Well, at least it's better than one. Uh, about Amelia, I guess we can safely say that she's her main element is fire. But what's her other element? I guess we'll be well. I guess we'll be learning that in in future builds, or maybe further in this demo. Let's move on. I flash her a grateful smile for automatic, for, uh, for, uh, for automatically explaining what a mage caster is. I'm guessing mage casters are usually a little older than a teen. Leanna greens. Just a little. Most mage casters are in their forties. My eyes widen. She must be really something special then. Anyway, thank you for all of your help, Professor. I'm sorry I wasn't able to be more helpful. But I wish you the best of luck on your journey. After saying goodbye, his wheelchair moves on his own and pushes him, pushes him out of the room. Whoa, did his wheelchair just move by itself? Not quite. He's using wind magic to push it along. The more I see magic in use, the more I wish I could use it. What did you think of everything the professor said? It sounds exactly just like what happened to me. We should find this Amber Miss City and talk to the professor there. She nods. Unfortunately, no one knows how to get there. Let's stop by the inn. Since it's a hub for travelers from all over, there's bound to be someone who knows something. That sounds like our best course of action. 
Once agreed, Liana leads the way out the academy. I follow her through the twisting roads of Illumia. When asked why we were taking so many turns, she said she wanted to avoid the marketplace, which would be so crowded with people we wouldn't be able to walk across, walk through. Soon we reach the inn. The place is a, lar is a lot larger than any other inn we've stayed, so stayed at so far. Along with the smoothly crafted dining tables, there's a fireplace along the far wall with labeled jars on the mantel. The place is fairly busy for this time of day and only a couple of tables are open. Per usual, Liana speaks with the innkeeper. I see him points towards a couple by the fireplace. When she returns, she drops a key in my hand. Here's the key to your room. I figured we're going to be spending the night here. I nod as I pocket my key. The innkeeper doesn't know how to get to Embermist, but he says that that couple comes from the far desert. They might know. Maybe you should split up. We can cover more ground that way. Good idea. I'll go talk to that couple first. Okay. As Liana walks off, I survey the room. I ask the girl adventurous, the cute girl the lonely in the corner. Okay. Logically... As... As... Well... There... As one character to... Either these two may have an... OC... Well... Normally, there, if you're talking to one person, maybe an, an official character will appear. Well, while asking a group, maybe it contains well, additional information and jokes in there. Uh, so, I guess we ask the cute girl. Maybe it's Amelia. I approached a pretty redhead by the bar. Hey there. She smiles. Hi. Okay, that wasn't Amelia. Are you looking to join a party? I can be. I sit down beside her. Have you been here long? She gives me a curious look. Long enough to know that I haven't seen you before. I'm just passing through. Oh? Where are you headed? To Amber Mist. Suddenly her smile drops. That's not the reaction, reaction I was expecting. Amber Mist doesn't exist. I frown. I don't think this is going to go anywhere. Alright, never mind then. Her smile drops again as she and she grabs a drink. She sways her hips as she walks and approaches a man who's drinking alone. Her alluring smell returns as she sits down beside him and touches his hand. Wait a minute. Is she a consort? Let's pretend that didn't just happen. Yeah, we should. And that voice of the consort there sounds a little familiar uh, sounds a little familiar uh, in Ace Academy maybe I maybe I'm wrong but sounds familiar either that's the default voice of female NPCs or or other or the main or one of the main characters whatever let's move on so let's ask the lone in the corner. Hmm. The lone types usually travel the world, don't they? I approach the man sitting alone in the far corner of the inn. His head is down as he nurses a tanker. Once I get close, I recognize him. Zack? His head shoots up and he stares at me with those familiar stoic guys. Oh, it's you. You, uh, finish whatever it, it is you came here to do? Yep. Cool. He's still as just as talkative as ever. You finish up at the academy? Yeah, it was interesting. Mages usually are. One of them told me about the city of Embermist. Zack snorts. Sending you on a wild goose chase, huh? I guess that means you don't know where it is either. Nope. Well, it was worth a shot. Alright, well, it was good seeing you. He nods. Looks like I'm, I'm not having much luck. I wonder how Liana is doing. Judging from her pout, she had about as much as success as I did. We make our way back to the bar. Greetings. Amelia waits for us by the bar, and I'm startled to see her presence. Liana looks just as shocked. What are you doing here? 
I've come to accompany you on your journey. Professor Xavier made it very clear that you were to stay at the Academy. Yeah, that... That, well, that bald guy from the Mutant show suggests you to stay there. His logic is rational, but my presence and assistance is far more beneficial for you than it is for me to remain at the Academy. What assistance? I am aware of the location of Ember Mist. How is that possible? How I know is irrelevant. I think it is real irrelevant. Alright, if you know, then tell us where it is. I will gladly impart this knowledge into you should you accept me as a travel companion. But the Academy won't let you go. She shrugs. If I cannot go, then I suppose neither can you. There's a new emotion for Liana. Liana bites her lip. I can tell she's torn. She does know the way to Ember Mist. We should let her join. We shouldn't go against a direct order from the Mage Academy. What other choice do we have? She frowns. Nobody at the inn knows the location. I doubt we'll find anyone else who, who can tell us how to get there. Are you really willing to give up this lead? Diana runs her hand through her hair as she thinks. She still glances at Amelia who watches us with hawk eyes. And that is kind of creepy if you imagine it. <laughs> I get. If this was an anime show, I. I would like to see how Amelia looks. That looks at us with hawk eyes. And uh, the the main characters, Liana and the main character was like, she's so creepy and what? And let's get out of here. No, no, no. But we must, we must accept. We must let her join. Finally, Liana's expression softens and she nods. Fine, you can come with us, but only on the condition that you let us bring extra protection. That is a logical conclusion. I am not opposed to it. All right, I'll see if I can find some mages last minute. No! Both Liana and I stare at Amelia. Mages will alert the Academy of our proposal. And then they wouldn't let us go. Correct. I suppose that makes sense. She taps a finger to her chin. I guess the only other option is to hire a mercenary. I agree. I have just a person in mind. I lead the two of them to where Zack is sitting. Hey, Zack! He looks up from his tanker. If he's surprised, he doesn't sh show it. I didn't expect to see you so soon. We were feeling a little bit of separation anxiety. To my surprise, Zack cracks a smile. I'm actually here to do business. Zack cocks his head slightly. You have my attention. We need protection for our newest companion. She nods towards Amelia, who merely stares at Zack. He gives her a once over. Isn't she a mage? Yes, but a student. That is not an accurate description. I am... Um... Liana glares at her. A student. While not untrue, I have fulfilled the necessary curriculum to be considered... Amelia! Liana is clearly ex... Exacerbate... Exacerbated. Exacerbated. That word... Amelia cocks her head to the side and studies Liana curiously. Anyway, what we're trying to ask is, are you for hire and will you, will you accept this job? Zack pauses and take a, takes a long swig from his drink. He looks from me to Liana to Amelia, then pauses again. Finally, he nods. Alright. Really? That's great! We're headed to Ember Mist. Zack raises an eyebrow at me. You found someone who knows the way. Yep. I point to Amelia. Interesting. Alright. Now that we have our team, what do we do now? There's no point in beginning our journey when the sun is almost gone. That's true. I should return to the Academy before my disappearance is observed. Good idea. We can reconvene here tomorrow morning. The three of us leave Zack alone and Amelia heads out of the inn. Just as she leaves, a group of young adults burst in. They laugh loudly and their cheeks are flushed as if, as if from dancing or running. A circuit of flowers is on each of their heads. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Diana gets. Oh, the festival! Festival? Yeah, it's a celebration of the spring equinox. 
Do you want to go check it out? Well, you know I'm tired. Pro progress the story, I guess. Or we can talk to Zack, maybe. But, or either Emilia, maybe. Sh or sure, we can join. We can go with Liana and we put our relationship with her, maybe. And I'm assuming if they're if they're if you're in the full version, there will be options where you can talk to Zack or Amelia, but I'm not sure. So like the only option is to follow is to go with well, Liana. Sounds fun. She, Liana grins. It is. It's one of my favorite festivals. We exit the inn. Although the moon has traded places in the sky with the sun, the streets are still bustling with people. Liana and I follow the crowd until we reach the town square. Colored strings of crystal lights hang from the large cherry trees lining the perimeter of the square. There are lights spilled soft rainbows on the smiling faces of the townsfolk. The heavily aroma of spices and mm. sorry and grilled meat entices me towards the festivities. A simple stand is set up on one side of the square where musicians play a jaunty tune. They tap their feet in time to the beat as dancers were around the center of the square. As we pass through the square, giggling girls offer succulents of flowers. Liana happily accepts hers and lets the girl place it on her head. On her head. It's so beautiful. Everything looks so different. Well, well. If, if possible, maybe, maybe you can put. Maybe there should be a circle of flowers around, actually around Liana. But think of to think of it. Well, the animators need to draw the draw the flowers around Liana and animate it. Well, it's kind of hard work. So I wouldn't press any further. And to those animators, great job. You've done so well. So beautiful. Oh, that's her. <laughs> her eyes sparkle as she taps her feet to the rhythm of music as she watches the pairs of dancers jumping and twirling. For the first time since we met, Liana's face holds no trace of caution. My eyes are drawn to her and as her smile lights up her entire face. She turns towards me and I quickly look away. I hope she didn't catch me staring. Staring at what? Would you like to dance? Well, I'm up for it. Time is boring. We're getting. I can. Can you handle my bad B-boy skills? I assume these two will let, the, let her think that I'm crazy. You know, but either I'm up for it or I can't dance. Sorry, I can't dance. No worries, I'll show you. No, I mean I won't dance. Aw, come on, it's easy. Before I can protest, Liana grabs me. Let me show you how we do it here. She takes my hand in hers and pulls me to a more secluded area on the dance floor. For this song, we're gonna raise our right hands up like this so they touch. She bends her elbows. She bends her elbow and holds up her arm to eye level. Then she moves my arm so it matches hers. I can feel the warmth of her fingers as they brush my own. Our hands will stay here, and then we use our right foot to step to the right, then left foot back, and we'll shift our weight front and back in a ball change. As she speaks, she demonstrates the steps. Then we do the same thing on the left. Left foot left, right foot back, and ball change. Then we step to the right and spin from behind. Come on, try it with me. Alright. We get into position and Liana cuts off and... And there's something will appear Five, that... Five, six, seven, eight. And... First I step, then... Mini game. As expected. Prototype version mini game, mini game will be available in future builds. Well, next that's good. Matching Liana, I step with my right foot. That's it. Then I step with my left foot to the back and do a ball change. Next, we do the same thing on the left side. Then we step with our right foot and spin. And mini game will be available in future builds, but they don't have to show it twice, perhaps. Although it kind of prepares us, let us prepare when the time comes. So next, that's good again. I step to the right and spin from behind, Liana and I are a step apart. Uh, do we do this right? Are we supposed to be this far apart? Yeah. Normally we'd be facing our new partners, and we do the whole thing over again starting with our left foot. 
And once that's done, we'll be facing each other again. You go through the steps another time and I manage to dance it perfectly. Wow, you're a natural! Are you sure you've never done this before? Her roaming grin is infectious and I find myself grinning just as broadly. It's because I, have, I had such a great teacher. Well, she's not grinning right now. Her cheeks flush as her cheeks flush as and as she's about to reply, our gazes meet. Liana's breath catches her in the uh, Liana's breath catches her catch, catches in her throat, and she seems to forget what she's about to say. For a second, I forget about the crowds of people around us. All I can see is her. Then someone jostles us as, and we quickly look away. What happened here? What just happened here? I catch her glancing at me and she smiles shyly. So, um, do you think you're ready to join the rest of the dancers? I'm game if you are. I hold out my hand and she accepts it with that same coy smile. Then I lead her out to the dance floor. We dance late into the night until our feet ache and our throats grow hoarse from laughing. Well, I, it's, that's really a problem with my throat so I really can't speak well for today because well I, I had karaoke with my friends so well good times oh but I still have to record videos well I don't want to delay any longer so the party is still going strong as Liana and I return to the inn and head into our separate rooms I haven't had that much fun in ages as I fall into my bed I enter dreamland with an immense smile on my face Okay, that's another day had gone, so I guess I'll stop here. So, thank you guys for watching Javelin Studios. I am Javelin, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Have a great day, and good night.